All right, guys, we are back. This is Yoshi Shiraki. You are listening to K Talk Radio, 1640 AM. This is the show, Utah Home Sweet Home. And today we're discussing things that you want to do before you die, right? Our topic is, uh, is death, but not, in, not the actual act of dying. It's that the inevitable is going to happen. We're all going to come, you know, we're all going to pass away, and this, this life is going to come to an end. And, and uh, for some of us, it may come suddenly. For other of us, it may come expectantly. We're going to be laying in our deathbed, sick, old, wondering, you know, what life could have been if we would have pursued the different things that we wanted. You know, they, I, I mentioned this earlier, if you're just tuning in, I can't remember what university, somebody did a, did a study where they interviewed a lot of old folks in an old folks home that were at their deathbed passing away and, and uh, you know, one of the questions is, you know, I think it was like, do you have any regrets or something? And, and it was basically, yes, I worked too much. No one in their deathbed said, man, my biggest regret is, I didn't work more, right? I wish I would have worked more and spent less time with my family. Like, nobody has said that. Um, it was usually that I worked too much and didn't get to uh, build the relationships and quality time with my kids, with my family that I would have liked to. Uh, I think that was number one, is the lack of, of time that uh, spent with family due to working, right? And so, anyways, we're discussing basically things that are holding you back and in many cases, for many people, they don't, they don't realize that they actually have a choice to change. And we discussed a buddy of mine earlier in the show who has these financial obligations, a nice house, nice cars. Him and his wife drive fancy cars, and, and um, he hates his job. You know, he dreads every Monday morning and loves every Friday afternoon and and um, wish he could change careers and, and basically, uh, you know, I was like, well, you can. You know, we, just, we were kicking the idea, you can. You can, you know, quit your job. He's like, no, I can't. I got to pay for my house and this and that. And I'm like, well, what if you sold your house? You have the choice to make that decision. You could sell your house, downsize, sell those fancy cars, drive less fancy cars, um, lessen your expenses so you don't have this massive financial monthly obligation, and then go do something that you're passionate about, right? But what holds us back, what holds him back was he didn't think he had the choice. And after we kicked it around, he's like, wow, there's hope. There's hope at the end of the tunnel. I feel like it's up to me now. Like I, I, I hate my job, it's, but it's my choice to stay there. You know, the nice things that he has in life, um, he realizes it's, it, it's choosing now. Do I prefer the nice things in life or do I prefer being happy every Monday through Friday from nine to five? And if he chooses, the nice things in life, then his sacrifice is going to be to stay where he is every Monday through Friday from nine to five. Probably, I mean, he might be able to get another job that pays him the same amount. But um, but if he chooses to be happy from Monday through Friday nine to five, doing what he wants, temporarily he may have to sacrifice those nice things in life. And we don't have to sacrifice him forever. Sometimes it's just the beginning that's a struggle. But if he goes out, builds, you know, starts building all over again, doing something different, he might be able to. Um, get that same career and then go back and buy those nice things. A thing that I see a lot with young kids, college, uh, when I say kids, kids out of, out of high school, out of college, um, you know, they go and they study these majors and degrees and, and then they come out and they've got all this student debt and uh, typically they studied something that they, you know, were interested in. Usually you don't go pay for college to study stuff you're not interested in. So. Most of the time they pay for stuff that they're interested in, but now they have all this student debt, and so now they got to pay for it. So they graduate from college, and many, many young people will then ask, I see this a lot, they'll start to um, ask themselves, what makes money? Not, what do I want to do for a living? They're concerned about generating income, because one, they're driven to make money for themselves, two, they got all the student debt, you know, and three, they want to make the money to buy the nicer things in life, typically. So now they're saying, what makes money? And now they go pursue what they think makes money. And, and they go start a, a, you know, a, a business, a company, or whatever it is. And, and, um, and I've been guilty of this myself. When I was younger, I um, sat down with a, with a friend and became a business partner. And uh, we thought, what makes money, right? We were, we were already doing real estate. We just wanted to bring in a second 
uh, a second uh, stream of income. You know, it's all about the multiple streams of income. So we're like, let's start another business. And uh, this individual was much older than I was. And um, he came up with the idea that we would collect on judgments, right? The United States of America has two trillion dollars of uncollected judgments. Now, for those of you who don't know, a judgment is basically somebody goes to court, they sue somebody, they win, and now the other person has to pay them $10,000, $2,000, $100, whatever it may be. Uh, and, and so what we would do is we would go to, and we focused on small claims court. So typically it was, I believe, and I can't remember now, it was a long time ago, but I believe it was typically $15,000 or less, somebody would typically win in a lawsuit. Now, there's $2 trillion in uncollected judgment because there's no judgment police. So if you ever sue someone in small claims court and you win $3,000, $4,000, whatever it is that you sued them for, it's very difficult for them to pay, uh, for you to collect that money. Yet now the you know the courts have said yes, that person owes you this amount of money. But that person, there's no, like I said, judgment police who goes and knocks on their door and says pay up, right? If they don't pay you, then they don't pay you. And the only person who's in charge of collecting it is you. And so now you just have the legal right to go out after them and get that. And there's steps you can take, like putting a lien on their home or garnishing their wages. There's legal things you can now do with that judgment that you couldn't before when they owed you the money originally. For whatever reason, let's just say they owed you money. Well, $2 trillion of uncollected judgment debt means that most people fail at getting their money even after the court, even after the, the court awards them the ability to get it. So we went out and start this company and yes, you can definitely make money. But what did we learn? We absolutely hated being debt collectors. So after 18 months of misery, you know, opening the doors of another stream of income, you know, making some income on this other stream of income, we realized that what we had done is we had taken our happy lives and made them miserable lives. And, you know, we were going to our nine to five, which was something that we created. We, had, we were the dumb ones to make the choice of starting a business that we went after on what makes money versus what do we want to do. And then this happened to be probably one of the worst jobs I've ever done in my life, calling people and informing them that we had just gotten the rights to their judgment from the person that they originally you know, lost in court to. Um, that person assigns us the judgment and now we're going to be taking legal action like putting a lien on your house, regarding your wages. Nobody wants to get a call from somebody who's telling them that, right? And in the beginning, me and my business partner were making those calls and then we eventually hired somebody because they were horrible calls to make. But we had to learn the business and what we learned is it absolutely sucked. <laughs> so my advice is definitely before you start thinking of what makes money, think about what you want to do to make your income and then start taking the necessary steps because at the end of the day, it is your choice to go do it or not to go do it. All right. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this show. Again, this is uh, K-Talk Radio, 1640 AM. I'm your host, Yoshi Shiraki. This is the show, Utah Home Sweet Home. And remember, take down, write down on a piece of paper all those wonderful things that you want to do before you die and start making a plan to go do them. Thanks, guys.